Dave Bird has moved beyond his role as solely Lil Dicky, the music creator, and into the world of TV with his new series, Dave. You might know me as Lil Dicky, yeah, yeah, yeah. but there's a lot more to me. Yeah, yeah. Dave explores the slant reality of his own life as a rapper trying to get his foot in the hip-hop door, a story that's unlike most in the industry today. The show has garnered many positive reviews and fan support as it's currently on pace to become FX's most watched comedy. That's hard. The premise of the show is uncommon, and it wrestles between plot-based comedy and simple gags without sacrificing its obvious messages, which is exactly why Dave works. It's clear that Bird's character on Dave is derived almost directly from his life as an upper-middle-class guy from the suburbs of Philadelphia with a dream of making it in hip-hop. I don't think it's imperative to be keyed in on real-life Lil Dicky's history to understand the show, but it's worth showing that the comparisons are obvious. Bird says he used his bar mitzvah money to fund his early songs and music videos that gained almost overnight success online, and that's exactly what happens to the character. How can we never talk about the 15 million views that I've gotten in three months, Ma? Real-life Bird knows the content of his raps is comical, but he still wants to prove that his rapping ability is in the upper echelon, and not restrained to just being a comedian. I think the standalone premise of the show is enough to make it work, but having the reinforcement and context that this actually happened to Bird in real life kind of helps quash the idea that the show is inherently unrealistic. I say this with the utmost sincerity, I am the next Kanye West. With that as a foundation, the show has a lot of production value. It's technically sound, well shot, and well written in a lot of respects. Nice decor, nice ambiance in here. In the show, Bird goes about trying to find some traction in the music world with his girlfriend Allie, her friend Emma, his manager Mike, his sound engineer and longtime friend Els, and Gata, his hype man on the show and also in real life. It's all of that, just chilling, real boss shit. The characters are nuanced and not thrown into any typical TV show stereotypes so as to develop them more as the show goes along, and that's a common theme throughout most facets of the show itself. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, the basis of using Bird's real-life experiences as a guy with a 9-to-5 job, dropping everything and becoming a rapper in a unique market is intriguing, but it's not enough for a fully fleshed-out show. So the natural inclination to fix that would be to cast over-the-top character support. Maybe a girlfriend who is completely dismissive of his career, or a sound tech that makes incredible beats that helps elevate Bird, or a world-renowned rapper taking him under his wing to help him move up the ranks, but the show doesn't use any crutch like that. There are shades of those things, absolutely, but they're built into the narrative and supplement the foundation of the show rather than detract from it, and that's a common theme that rings true through most of the series. I love it. Dave has been criticized by some as uneven in that it bounces too much between some lowbrow humor, like Bird's description of his torn up genitals or shitting in the woods on a hike, mixed with more elaborate comedic payoffs, like having his first live performance be at a young fan's memorial after his death. We put John in the ground today. As I rap this song, he looks down on me. Some also say the show offers little depth to its characters early on, but I think all of that shows the series' worth. You would be hard-pressed to find any successful TV show whose first season is its greatest, and it's usually because it takes time for themes and characters on the series to grow and have that reflected in the writing. Some shows get cancelled and never get to see that growth, and I would argue it's normally because they are way too over the top to the point of being annoying or simply bring nothing to the table that's worth building on and Dave toes that line pretty well. It's clear that the show is focused on Lil Dicky, who's confident to the point of sometimes being brash and arrogant about his work as a rapper, while trying to avoid falling into the classification of a comedy musician, and it lets that story ride while still being intelligently funny and calculated in other ways. I like the sound of all of this. Some episodes are obviously meant to simply be bottled comedic plots, but others offer a deeper evaluation or even just a meaningful, believable, and honest conversation. The perfect example of this is episode 5, one of Dave's most highly rated, in which we learn Gata's background in the music industry that leads up to the reveal that he deals with bipolar disorder, and how that has affected his career and personal life, which Gata has said is true in real life as well. It makes me feel like a rat in a hole sometimes, like, I gotta express this to you bro, hot, cold, that's me. Mental illness is not an easy thing to portray in TV or movies without either dramatizing it to an unrealistic level or satirizing or undercutting it in some way. But Dave doesn't do either. I've been like this for a while. We appreciate you sharing all this with us. I, like, seriously, you can tell us any of this stuff. 
I love y'all, man, and you guys make me feel comfortable. You guys are weirdos, just like me, bro. This dude rap about having a small dick all the time. This dude right here rubs acne on his back, no problem. The conversation is emotional, but it's honest and subtle and doesn't shy away from even throwing in some jokes to go along with it. And that's what separates Dave from other shows that may try and tackle the same issue. And I appreciate that. And I think I can speak for all of us when I say we're in this thing together, man. Another tamer example is episode seven, during which Els and Emma have a drunken hookup and have to handle being friends with each other and the rest of the cast after having sex. There are definitely some simple plot devices, but it doesn't beat you over the head with the conflict like it's something huge. Generally speaking, the subtlety in the show is used to replicate how certain situations would go in real life, and you see that in a lot of ways. One of the show's biggest draws is the celebrity appearances littered throughout the series, and they're used pretty diversely. Some, like Justin Bieber in episode 9, feel sort of like throwaway additions. Yeah, Biebs out. I'm just kidding. I don't actually say that. I'm pretty normal. But most are used either as full plot points, like YG in the first episode, small gags with realistic portrayals, like Young Thug getting Lil Dicky sick from a blunt in episode 4, or almost complete caricatures, like Benny Blanco in episode 9. Somebody lay me down, pour buttermilk all over me, dust me in a light dusting of cornflakes, front flip me into a deep fryer, spit on my asshole. Even the relationships between the main cast go through the same gamut, like the Els and Emma episode, or even the dynamic between Lil Dicky and his girlfriend Allie, which begins on a pretty vanilla note to begin the season, but gets its legs and creates a full storyline in the later episodes. Yes, of course, I love you, but we really gotta go right now. Now, all of this is not to say that the show is perfect or revolutionary by any means. <laughs> That's the weirdest, there's no need to even. The show still leans on some pretty mundane plots from time to time, and even some characters like Mike don't feel particularly pinned down or necessary in large chunks, but that's why it comes back to growth. If Dave simply told the audience every character trait or every quirky characteristic right off the bat, the series would have nowhere to go other than exploring the music industry in a show that clearly wants to dive into the mechanics behind relationships and personal mentalities with a ton of funny moments ahead of the rapping itself. Dave will almost certainly get renewed for a second season where fans can expect that development, and the audience hasn't been deprived of any comedy or insightful content as the show works towards that peak. The nuances of the semi-autobiographical life of an already fascinating guy help give the show a lot of integrity and value, and fans are quickly realizing that. It's a simple take on a fun premise that bundles together to make a show that's just worth watching. The show is trash, except for these two actually talented actors. Outside of them, the show's garbage. I wouldn't watch it if you fucking paid me.